Hey everyone, this is Aiden coming from my new channel, Virtual Outdoors. Over the past year, I've really been enjoying watching hiking videos, vlogs, and gear reviews, and it's inspired me to start videoing some of my experiences out on the trail and sharing with you guys some of the gear I'll be using. Now, a small disclaimer here, I'm not a through hiker and my gear is not what you'd consider ultralight. I'm coming at this from the perspective of someone who has a family with young kids and commitments and a full-time job that I just can't leave. So I'm able to get out several times a year for overnight trips or, or long weekends, and that's about it. I just went on a 35 kilometer hike in the Otways National Park, a little over two hours outside of Melbourne, Victoria. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what I brought with me on that trip. First up, the pack I used is the Black Wolf Light 55 liter. It was packed as is, with the exception of the neoprene pouches that I've fixed onto the shoulder straps for a future trip. I did actually use this neoprene stubby holder to, um, attached to the strap as a cheap means to have easy access to a small water bottle. It's actually classified as a day pack. However, if you have the right combination of gear, it is well and truly suited to multi-day hikes where in my opinion, you could even take it on a through hike. It is top loading with a top lid pocket held down by two clips. It's made from 100D ultra ripstop nylon. It has two stretchy mesh side pockets. And as you can see, one of them has a hole in it from a stick and that tore straight through as I was walking. It also has a front pocket shown here. My favorite feature of this pack is the aluminum tension frame and the mesh backing which provides really good ventilation to your back. And I found it a really comfortable ride. So using my kitchen scales, mine weighs in at around about 1,250 grams or roughly 44 ounces. I'll do a full review on this pack after I've done a few more trips with it, but so far I really like it. So now here you can see all the gear that was in my pack and the clothes I was wearing on the right hand side of the screen all splayed out. The shelter I used and am currently trying out is the 3F UL Landshan 2. That's in this Cedar Summit stuff sack here. I took it out of its original stuff sack because it's just so difficult and fiddly to get it back into. It's a double wall tent that uses trekking poles to set up. The fly is 15D ripstop nylon while the floor is 20D. I didn't use a ground sheet on this trip but on future trips I'll definitely take a polygrow ground sheet because I could feel how thin the floor was while I was sitting inside on top of wet ground. It comes in at 1120 grams or 39.5 ounces without the stuff sack according to my kitchen scales which is not bad for a double wall tent with just enough space for two people and two large vestibules. I plan to use it further on some upcoming hikes and again I'll do a review of this piece of gear in the near future. The tent stakes I used were a combination of these generic titanium shepherd hook stakes from eBay and these aluminium groundhog style stakes that come as standard with the Landshan 2. The titanium shepherd hook stakes were great and I'll definitely take them with me again. However, I'm not a fan of the groundhog style stakes, uh, which are also a little bit heavier all up, my stakes added 78 grams or 2.75 ounces to, to my shelter weight. I'll now mention my trekking poles as I used them to set up my shelter. I took the Trekology Trek Z aluminium folding poles. They held up fine with all those river crossings uh, and there were times I was putting quite a bit of pressure on them because my feet were constantly slipping out from under me. Uh, the cork grip is invaluable uh, as it's far more comfortable to hold on to with sweat or rain than rubber grips. Uh, these poles are on the heavier side at around 280 grams or 9.9 .9 ounces each. It's probably because they only cost me 37 Australian dollars for the pair. So definitely a budget item. Moving on to my sleep system. Uh, for this I used the Cedar Summit Ultralight Insulated Inflatable Pad. It's a regular size and comes in at 480 grams or 16.9 ounces. It's made from 40D ripstop nylon is five centimeters thick and has an R value of 3.3. The sleeping bag I used, I put in this polyester dry bag and I'll just get it out for you now. So this is it here. It's a sleeping bag that I've used for the last five years or so. 
It's the Katmandu Pathfinder 5 degree Celsius 700 fill power goose down. And this is a large size, so it weighs in at 830 grams or roughly 29 ounces. Um, it's done the job up until now, but it's not what I would recommend for anyone who's starting out. I've just placed an order for a UGQ Bandit quilt, so I'm pretty excited to try that one out on my next adventure. For my pillow, which I kept in the same stuff sack as a sleeping bag, I use a Trekology Ultralight Inflatable Pillow. It's the exact same design as the $40 or $50 Cedar Summit version. However, it's only 15 Australian dollars on Amazon. So it's a really good budget item. It weighs only 78 grams or 2.75 ounces and packs up extremely small. Uh, this was a game changer for me because I typically am not a fan of inflatable pillows. I will say I sleep much better on this with a pillowcase and uh, I use my spare t-shirt to fulfill the function. So this is my cook kit all packed up and I'll unpack it now so we can see what's inside. So for my cook kit, I use two titanium pots, one 750 mil and one 400 mil, which I keep inside. I like to have two so I can drink my coffee while I cook food. Uh, these are generic ones I found on eBay, likely the cheapest ones I could find at the time. Inside the small pot, I keep my Kathmandu titanium stove. I've used this thing for years now, and it's uh, never missed a beat. As you can see, it's quite small and lightweight. A mini Bic lighter, a cleaning pad, uh, a microfiber towel from the supermarket. This is just uh, a generic one uh, and I use this for drying. I also took my long handled titanium spoon uh, which I keep in the lid of my pack not with my cook kit so that I can easily find it when I need it and I packed all my food in an op sack because although we don't have bears in Australia uh, we do have wombats, possums and other rodents that will gladly chew through a tent to get to food so I was just trying, trying to eliminate some or most of the food odour to discourage them from doing that to me. The water filter I used is the Soya Squeeze Micro. I would not recommend this to anyone. Uh, it has a really slow delivery rate, which is quite frustrating. And it's widely said that they clog up easily, although this has, hasn't happened to me yet. I intend to replace it with the tried and tested Soya Squeeze at some point. Uh, with the filter I used, the Evernew 2 litre water pouch I initially purchased this because the soya bag that came with my filter split a seal and with the second use and I don't trust the replacement not to do the same thing all over again. I've used this now on a few hikes and it's really tough with very strong plastic welds as you can see there. I don't think this would break anytime soon, I think it's going to last a long time. It's also made in Japan uh, which is a really good sign. Uh, but the problem I've had with this is that it takes a while to fill up. It only has one standard bottle size opening um, and it reluctantly lets water in. Uh, this leads to frustrating amounts of time being spent standing on slippery rocks, stooped over a, a river with my hand in the freezing water and I'm just over it. So I've decided to try another product for my next hike. As you can see I used this Balance 700ml water bottle which is really just the same as a smart water bottle. With this I had a 300ml water bottle for um, easy access on my pack. Uh, this is all I needed as I was completely surrounded by water the entire time. So this is my first aid kit. It comes in at 160 grams or 5.6 ounces, which is more than what most ultralight YouTubers seem to carry. Uh, when it comes to the only medical supplies I'll have access to, if something goes wrong, I prefer to carry stuff I might not need rather than need something I don't have with me. So I have my Diddy bag split up into two bags. So in this small drawstring polyester sack, keep some earplugs and a blindfold for noisy or um, camps that I might stay at that have lights on at night. I've got a small tube of toothpaste, a sawn off toothbrush, some sunscreen, which I didn't use, some lotion, some tooth floss, which can double as uh, string or thread in an emergency. 
a repair kit um, to patch up my tent or um, my sleeping pad if needed and a spare washer for my Sawyer squeeze. Now this bag and its contents comes in at 108 grams or 3.8 ounces. In this other small roll top, I kept my Anchor PowerCore 10,000 with charging cables, a lightweight gerber knife, a lightweight torch, Petzl Actic headlamp. I like to have two sources of light uh, just in case. Uh, this Petzl headlamp is uh, really powerful and it's a really good quality headlamp. However, it's a bit heavy and it also uses um, AAA batteries. And so I'm keen to replace this with a, a lighter um, headlamp that uses rechargeable. And I should mention that this second ditty bag, if you will, came in at 400 grams or just over 14 ounces. On a side note, I bought a set of five assorted polyester roll top dry bags for only 15 Australian dollars online. And they weigh only a couple of grams heavier than a really good quality seal nylon dry sack um, for a fraction of the price. So they've been a great way for me to compartmentalize my gear and are definitely water resistant. In another video I plan to do a real life comparison between one of these, a Sea to Summit Ultra Sill dry bag and a Dyneema dry bag to see how comparable they are. So stay tuned for that one. So in this stuff sack is my spare clothes. So I'll unpack that and we'll see what's in there. So I took Polypro Katmandu thermals, a top and a bottom layer, a spare pair of running shorts, a spare moisture wicking t-shirt from Katmandu. I also wore one of these because I think they're really good as an active layer. They stay dry and seem to be fairly odor resistant unlike most regular sports tops. So this right here is the Pack Tau Nano. So as you can see it compresses up really small and is really lightweight. This over here is my puffy jacket. It's the North Face Thermobol hoodie synthetic and I love this thing for any temperatures over two or three degrees Celsius. It was a low of around seven degrees Celsius overnight during this last trip and I was very comfortable wearing this. It's not an active layer for me so breathability wasn't really put to the test. So outside of the stuff sack I took these packet rain pants which I bought for around about 25 Australian dollars from Anaconda. I didn't wear these on this trip but I have used them before on a particularly wet hike um, and they were really really good for at camp they added warmth and kept me dry while I was setting up camp um, I also took this rain jacket um, it's a an older model from Katmandu I don't even know what range it is but um, yeah I'm not a fan it's it's got no lining inside and whatever this material is is really sticky it just gets caught on your clothes and feels horrible to the skin and I'm not even convinced that this thing would keep me dry all day so that's got to go and I'll be using a different um, rain jacket for the next trip I make. So over here are the clothes I wore. Got these wool blend socks which I bought from Aldi. Uh, they were about $14 for two pairs. Um, here's that other active t-shirt from Kathmandu. Some basic running shorts and a full zip fleece from Kathmandu. This is a lightweight version and it's pretty old, but it still keeps me um, warm enough. What I like about it is it's a great lightweight active layer. I can wear it on the trail, it wicks away sweat. It was raining on me for a lot of the day and despite getting a little bit damp, this fleece um, kept me nice and warm as it retains its heat um, despite being wet and then it dried off really quickly. The shoes I wore were the Salomon X Ultra GTX. They're a Gore-Tex shoe. When I first bought them, they were extremely waterproof. I could walk through the water all day and they wouldn't let water in. However, over time, and maybe I reckon about 400 kilometers of use, the Gore-Tex breaks down, particularly where the shoe flexes here. So these ones will keep me dry now for several hours but at the end of the day, I'm gonna have damp feet 
anyway. In saying that, they're still really lightweight. They're really comfortable. Um, I like the, the quick lace system and they have a really good grip as well. They're still a really good shoe, but I think it's probably time to retire these if I want to keep my feet dry. Now the last things I need to add is this $4 foam sitting pad, some error guard which I kept in the side pocket of my pack. So there you have it, that's all my gear that I took on the overnight hike in the Otways National Park. I'll have some more videos out soon of future hikes or gear reviews. I hope you've gotten something out of this one and thanks for watching.